In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. I welcome you to this celebration of the Eucharist today, the third Sunday of Lent. Can you believe it? We're reaching the end of Lent, and the question I ask you right now is, what have you done about it? What have you done about this moment of grace, this season of grace? Three weeks, what have you done to become holier? to draw yourself in the name of Jesus closer to the heart of Jesus. Well, time is not lost, do not despair. This is a mass that makes us holy, but we also have our Holy Week retreat coming up, where I know you will be blessed on your journey. But let's look back, let's think, let's reflect, and let's pray for the world right now in need of a lot of prayer, for peace in the world, but let's also pray for our souls that our souls may be holy, just as the Father is holy. And so, Lord, we look back over the last couple of weeks and we ask, Lord, for those times we didn't make the effort, the extra effort, to respond to your grace. Lord, have mercy. For those times we didn't put others first, we put ourselves first, when we had opportunities to reach out through almsgiving, through self-sacrifice. Christ of mercy. And for those times we didn't pray, we didn't give you the time, we didn't give you the generosity that you ask of us during this season of Lent. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us the remedy for sin, look graciously on the confession of, your lowly, of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives in unity by the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was looking after the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law priest of Midian. He led his flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There, the angels of the Lord appeared to him in the shape of a flame of fire, coming from amid the middle of a bush. Moses looked. There was a bush blazing, but it was not being burnt up. I must go and look at this strange sight, Moses said, and see why the bush is not burnt. Now the Lord saw him go forward, and God called to him in the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, he said. Here I am, Moses answered. Come no nearer, he said. Take off your shoes, for the place of which you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your fathers, he said. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses covered his face, afraid to look at God. And the Lord said, I have seen the miserable state of my people in Egypt, and I have heard their appeal to be free from their slave drivers. Yes, I am well aware of their sufferings. I mean to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and bring them out of the land to a land rich and broad, a land where milk and honey will flow, and the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jesuits. Then Moses said to God, I am to go then to the sons of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. But if you ask me, what is his name? What am I to tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. This, he added, is what you must say to the sons of Israel. I am as sent me to you. And God said to Moses, you are to say to the sons of Israel, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name for all time. By this name, I shall be invoked for all generations to come. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. My soul give thanks to the Lord. All my being bless his holy name. My soul give thanks to the Lord and never forget all his blessings. Response. The, the Lord, Lord is, is kind, kind and, merciful. and merciful. It is he who forgives all your guilt, who heals every one of your hills, who redeems your life from the grave, who crowns you with love and compassion. Response. The, the Lord, Lord is, is kind, kind and, and merciful. merciful. The Lord does deeds of justice, gives judgment for all who are oppressed. He made known ways to Moses, and his deeds to Israel's son. Response, the, the Lord, Lord is kind, kind and, merciful. and merciful. The Lord is compassion and love, slow to anger and rich in mercy. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so strong is his love for those who fear him. Response, the, the Lord, Lord is kind, is kind and, and merciful. merciful. Second reading, Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 6. 10 to 12. The life of the people under Moses in the desert was written down to be a lesson for us. I want to remind you, brothers, how our fathers were all guided by a cloud above them and how they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in this cloud and in this sea. All ate the same spiritual food and all drank the same spiritual drink. Since they all drank from the spiritual rock that followed them as they went, and that rock was Christ. In spite of all this, most of them failed to please God, and their corpses littered the desert. These things all happened as warnings for us, not to have the wicked lusts for, for forbidden things that they had. They must never complain. Some of them did and they were killed by the destroyer. All this happened to them as a warning, 
and it was written down to be a lesson for us who are living at the end of the age. The man who thinks he is safe must be careful does he, that he does not fall. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. Repent, says the Lord, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Glory to you, word of God, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with that of their sacrifice. At this he said to them, Do you suppose that these Galileans who suffered like that were greater sinners than other Galileans? They were not. I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen on whom the tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you suppose that they were more guilty than any other people living in Jerusalem? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. He told them this parable, a man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came to looking for fruit, but on it he found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, look here, for three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and have found none. Cut it down, why should it be taking up ground? Sir, the man replied, leave it one more year and give it to me to dig around it and to manure it and bear fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Do you think that God sent this pandemic as a punishment? Do you think maybe that God sent this war, the wars that are happening as a, a punishment for our sins? I think not. I, I, I know not. You see, because even though war, for example, is the consequence of our sin, of our selfishness and of our pride, and it is an overflow of what is already in our heart, wars don't come out of nowhere. They come out of an overflow of what is already there. It manifests in leadership, in politics, what is already r running rancid inside. But what about those people who are suffering because of the consequence of this rancidness, because of this sinfulness? Is it because they have more sin than you and I? Because some people get COVID or the world has got COVID? Is it because this is a more sinful generation than times before? No. And God uses these situations to make us holy. God uses these situations to draw us to his heart. But we are all liable to God's judgment. Every one of us. God doesn't punish certain people for certain things. God looks at us and he loves us. But he also is a judgmental God. He is a God who has given us more chances than we could ever hope or imagine but the reality is there is a limit and the limit is our lifetime but the thing is again we don't know how long our life is some of you praying here might not be alive tomorrow I might not not be alive tomorrow and this is a reality that we have to face that we have to make ourselves ready to turn away from our sins because we're not living for this world we're not meant to live for this world we're meant to live for eternity if you're so distracted that you're stuck in fear because of wars and pandemics if you're scared of losing your finances and your securities in this world then your focus might be wrong and you need to start looking towards your eternity because you are an alien in this world, not a citizen of this world, but a citizen of heaven. And you need to start growing up and living as a citizen of heaven. And what do citizens of heaven live like? They live like they're going to live in heaven. 
they're not attached to things of this world. They use things of this world, but they hold on to them lightly. They're not attached to sin. They're not tied down by the chains of sin and addiction. And I acknowledge that there are people here who are stuck in sin and in addiction. But now's the time to do whatever it takes to get out of this muck. Because we don't know how much time we have left. We need to be ready at all times to repent. What does it mean to repent? The word repent means metanoia. It means you're walking in one direction and then you stop and you turn around to the complete opposite direction. Because you think that the direction you're walking in right now is going to bring you to heaven. God is going to be merciful. Don't worry, God will forgive me. Don't worry, everything will be okay. No. It is our responsibility not only to receive God's grace, but to respond to it, to stop the life of sin, to stop the sinfulness in our lives, to turn around and walk towards heaven. Because if you're not walking towards heaven, you're walking away from heaven. And this is why we need to get ourselves ready. And I don't want to scare you, but the thing is I'm betraying you if I don't tell you this truth that you don't want to lose your eternity for the joys of a moment. You don't want to miss out on the banquet because you're distracted by lollies, by sweets, by candy. God has a beautiful banquet for us, but in order to enjoy it, we need to get rid of the sin of our lives. And we can do this in Jesus' name. If you need professional help, seek professional help. If you need counseling, get counseling. If you need to go to confession, go to confession. You need the grace that God gives us through the professional world, but also through the sacraments. Turn to the Lord. He loves you so much and he wants you to get to heaven more than you want to get to heaven. Do not be afraid, but just abandon your heart to the love of God and he will save you. But the part of that abandonment is also metanoia, turning away from your sin. God is love, but his love is too great to leave us in darkness, to leave us on the wrong path. And so together, let us proclaim our faith in a God who loves us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so now we bring our prayers to the Lord. You know what we need to pray for. We need to pray for the world, a world that is in a lot of turmoil at the moment. We need to pray for the church, the church that needs the courage to stand up, to respond, to speak out. We need to pray for you and for me that we might turn away from our sins and believe in the good news. And so, Lord, we bring all of our prayers to you. Lord, we thank you that you love us so much, but you want to give us freedom and joy. Lord, hear us. And so now in a moment of silent prayer or together with your family out loud, just bring your prayers to the Lord. And so, Lord, we ask you to receive these prayers, which we pray through the intercession of Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
in the crushing, in the pressing. You are making new wine. In the soil I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I yield to you and to your careful hand. When I trust you, I don't need to understand. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. So pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for, your own, for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and, and have our being. For it is you, Christ our Savior, who brought us to eternal life through your cross. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your praise as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord. 
called the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, with Shane, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace, I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us now offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. pray together. I'd like to pray for you at this moment. If you're comfortable, just bow your head and just receive what God wants to give you. Father God, I thank you for every single person here who's praying with us at this moment. Lord, you know their hearts and you know their minds, their bodies, their souls. You also know, Lord Jesus, the struggle they have to reconcile the goodness of you and what you have given them with the struggles of their lives, the addictions and the sinfulness. Lord, but you love them in their brokenness, but love them too much to leave them there. And so, Father God, I just ask that you pick your people up from the darkness. That you give them the strength to overcome this sin, this sin that they keep falling into, the very same sin over and over and over again. No matter how much they try, Lord, you are a victor. You are able to set them free. Lord, I pray against any addiction, lustful addictions, gossip addictions, addictions of stealing, addictions of lying, addictions of, 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 of dishonesty, Lord, even in business. Lord, for drug addictions and alcohol addictions, Set your people free in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I'd like to pray for those who have got a bad diagnosis, those with cancer and those with motor neuron diseases, those who are unable to have children. Father God, I just pray for breakthrough. I pray for healing in your name. I thank you, Lord, that you're healing someone right now from the back, Lord. Lord, I thank you also there's someone who has um, a problem with their ankle. Lord, you're healing them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, you're making a way for those who aren't able to conceive to have children. Lord, thank you. Lord, I'd like to pray for those also who are looking for a partner in life. Give them the grace to encounter this person, to be able to come to a place where they can find you in this other person. Lord, you are an amazing God, a loving God, and a God of provision. We praise you. 
And especially, Lord, we stand against the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. And so we'll pray together an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. On behalf of our ministry, FRG ministry, thank you for praying with us. Please continue to support this ministry. We need your help, especially at this moment. Our work continues. We continue to reach out to people across the world. We continue to have to pay our staff and to continue to reach out through um, online, but also through schools and, and also reaching out to the poor and to the broken and those affected also by this war. Go to frgministry.com forward slash donate to be part of this ministry, to find out more and to support this ministry. Also check out our online courses um, at, on EncounterCourses.com. We have some amazing courses. We'll even play an ad at the end of this Mass. But I'd want to draw your attention to our online retreat, Holy Week. We're going to have a time to pray together every day for the Holy Week. So this is an opportunity for us to grow in holiness. It's going to be a lot of live sessions, liturgies, and a whole lot of opportunity, a, a PDF for you to download, to pray every day, even by yourself. It will be a guided retreat. So join in. Um, there's the link also at the bottom here. Also, thank you for those of you who do support this, our ministry partners. If you'd like to know more about being a ministry partner and also our pilgrimage uh, that's coming up. Again, we'll, we'll give you more information after, after Mass. Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while sitting on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in this mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.
I am so excited to invite you on behalf of FR Jing Ministry to our pilgrimage to the Holy Land. In the middle of October, we are going to head to Israel, to the Holy Land, to seek Jesus, the Jesus of history, to walk where he walked, where he talked, where he interacted with people. We're going to have time to pray, time to worship. We're going to have musicians there. We're going to have time to fall in love with Jesus. The spaces are limited and we invite you to register now. We look forward to seeing you and journeying with you in the footsteps of Jesus. Encounter by FRG Ministry presents our online subscription package. As a member, you will receive digital on-demand access to Encounter's growing library of online courses. Encounter and Encounter Youth online courses cover teaching, devotional and practical elements of the Catholic faith to help individuals, teachers, students and parishes across the world grow in their faith and understanding of the Catholic Church and their relationship with Jesus Christ. Current titles include Knowing Mary, School of Prayer, Introduction to the Bible, The Mass and more, with new courses being added regularly. All Encounter courses include high-definition videos with expert and engaging speakers, testimonies from everyday Catholics, and downloadable content including interactive PDF guides, prayer cards, and wallpapers. These courses are also accredited for professional development for Catholic education staff in Australia. All Encounter Youth courses include teaching videos, interactive student and teacher PDFs with lesson plans, and guided prayer and reflection. For more information about enrollment and subscription options, head to www.encountercourses.com slash subscription. Be sure to follow us on social media on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Encounter Courses. Encounter Youth by FRG Ministry presents the Kingdom of God. Join Father Rob Galia, Brendan Alliston and Clara Ravdanovich in this curriculum-based online course that explores what the Kingdom of God is and how we are called to bring about this Kingdom today by following the example of Jesus. Filled with an engaging visual narrative, high-definition teaching videos and interactive teacher and student PDFs complete with lesson plans, class activities and more, this course is an invaluable addition to your classroom or youth group. Get access to this course and our entire Encounter Courses library at encountercourses.com forward slash subscription.